There's a secretive government bureaucracy tasked with compliance regulation, and it has been filibustering my access to information requests, and I need your help to make sure we get to the bottom of this elusive government organization. Ontario's pandemic response spawned a secretive compliance bureaucracy known as Regional Regulatory Hubs, or RRH. They're overseen by Regulatory Compliance Ontario, RCO, born from pandemic-related initiatives to create permanent regulatory compliance mechanism that utilizes behavioral science to achieve its goals. And this happens with little, if any, public oversight. The clerk of the small town of Coburg, Ontario, Brent Larmer, briefly mentioned the secretive initiative during a town council meeting earlier this year in February. Referring to an eastern regulatory hub, Larmer noted that the mysterious bureaucracy meets every six weeks to discuss regulatory enforcement, including building trust in response to protests, misinformation, and anti-government sentiment. Don't take it from me. Here are his words. Bylaw Department for Coburg is an active participant in the Eastern Regional Regulatory Hub, which is a group of individuals from different ministries, agencies, and authorities. They come together every six weeks, and our manager sits on that to discuss top of mind issues and commonalities and how regulatory enforcement services are delivered. And I think this is a good um, step the province has done in order to get a lot of like minded um, municipal law enforcement agencies together to discuss issues. So. The issues right now to date that we've been part of is building public trust in response to protests, misinformation, anti-government and sediment, um, addressing sector challenges. So involving movement of excess containment soil and rideshare services. So delivering vape products to miners is a big one as well too, which we're working the province to assist with that. Unlicensed businesses. So involving illegal online sales of food and tobacco, as well as home-based businesses. Um, and then the sharing information portion, uh, receiving referrals, tips related to labor trafficking, and then heads up alerts for officer safety and best practices. And then in regards to program delivery through discussions with the ministries, it's involving creation of new compliance programs, policies, improving compliance outcomes using behavioral insights. Um, so this whole program or whole participation has the ability to share knowledge, resources, access training, and build capacity for collaboration. And um, we feel, and, and as discussed with the manager, this is a real valuable asset to the town to be part of this group. Now, I featured a report on this in June, which I will hyperlink in the written component of this video report with access to information documents that I had received back about this secretive agency that sounds a lot like a ministry of surveillance, propaganda, and censorship. It's an inter-ministry initiative, a collaborative effort, so they say, that includes over a dozen individual ministries, Oddly, the objective outline of this initiative was edited to look as though it had been released in full. According to the index of records, though, that particular document was supposed to be withheld, but they made it look like it had all been released when in fact, it wasn't. Armed with that information, I filed more broad requests, which are only made possible through your generosity and support at our exclusive accountability journalism website, rebelinvestigates.com. It was clear in those response documents that this sneaky, elusive bureaucracy lacks transparency and accountability, which is why I filed for more. And now they've come back to my access to information request with notes of clarification, not once, but twice. After issuing five different points of clarification the first go around, the Ontario Ministry of Agriculture, Food and Rural Affairs has now requested an additional point of clarity, citing uncertainty as to exactly what type of records I'm seeking. Aside from getting the feeling that they really don't want to answer, all of this is just as uncertain for the lay person. That's the whole reason why I've had to file these requests. It's intentionally broad in hopes of capturing a robust picture of how Regulatory Compliance Ontario operates, thanks to the complete secrecy of this entire organization, which again meets every six weeks unbeknownst to you and me, i.e. the public. And now it's impossible to know how to clarify their ridiculous response. So in the meantime, I've accepted some of their suggestions and will keep filing until we get to the bottom of this compliance bureaucracy's top of mind issues that include things like behavioral science, avian influenza, compliance enforcement, joint investigations, misinformation, public trust, sector challenges, unlicensed businesses, how and who they classify as bad actors, 
what kind of information sharing they engage in, and the program delivery itself. I also want to know who's involved and how much they're being paid, because the use of behavioral insights in compliance programs raises serious concern for the continued psychological manipulation of the masses, suggesting that this is a tool for unchecked bureaucratic control rather than to serve the public interest. For Rebel News, I'm Tamara Ugolini. You can support our exclusive investigations and this kind of accountability journalism at rebelinvestigates.com. Thanks to our crowdfunding efforts there, we're able to continue with this kind of reporting. Please support us and find out more at rebelinvestigates.com.